encourage people. Well, mainly small business owners, because the statistic is that probably 90, 95% or more of all businesses, specifically in the United States, are small businesses with the 50 employees or less. And so they're kind of kind of the backbone of the United States. You, you would think that all of the big major corporations with thousands and thousands of employees are really uh, the backbone. They do employ a lot of people, certainly, but those people that have, uh, are entrepreneurs at heart, they've, uh, they've come up with a business that they can uh, run themselves and, and be proud to be uh, the owner and, and own, their own, own their own business, uh, work their own hours and, and be independent. To me, that's what I did for many, many years in the radio business when I was selling advertising. And uh, I loved helping the small businesses when I go over to visit my clients. Uh, I'd sell them radio advertising and other different types. And to go in and have them, hey, oh, hi, Dave, come on in. Glad to see <laughs> you. And they're happy because we had, uh, we'd helped their business grow. Wow. And that was very important to me. And, and it still is very important to me. Talking of helping people's business grow, do you know a year ago, 2020, we were expecting something big. We were expecting like a boom in, in the whole world and something different happened. You know, it, the pandemic. What do you have to say with businesses and, and pandemic? How were you able to impact people? I'm sure a lot of businesses were closed down. What do you have to say about that? Well, that's a great qu question. Uh, I was actually in another division of the company that I was working with. I was doing employee benefits and I have a... I have a background of also uh, not only the radio stuff, but okay. uh, I love business. I own several businesses myself. I started wow. businesses in the past. I had a janitorial company, a carpet cleaning business. I also had an insurance agency and did all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. And so that had its own impact over the years. But what I found was that as far as employee benefits go, uh, all of the companies that I would call upon were not there. The offices were all closed. The, the owners, the human resource director's offices, they were all had been sent home. And so it made it very difficult. However, uh, I transitioned into uh, contacting people through Zoom and through phone calls to, to encourage them to uh, give them a lot of value. Uh, uh, what, I, what I do is... Uh, uh, is I uh, show people how to eliminate expensive uh, legal fees if they've got a small business and to protect and grow their business. I can also show people how to pay off their credit cards and, and believe it or not, make up to an extra six-figure income in their spare time working from home or working from anywhere mm -hmm. in as little as four hours a week. That automatically pays them over and over again. There's so many people, mm -hmm. as you know, that are have determined that, well, I'm not going back to work. I'm home and uh, I, don't, I'm, I don't like what's going on. And I'm, I'm going to work, find a way to make, make money from, from home. So, you know, there's something you said about uh, helping people. One thing I wanted to ask you is there's this thing that most people ask when, whenever they want to start businesses. The question is, most people say, like when you hear most inspirational speaker, they say you should do something you're passionate about. So what advice do you have for people who want to start business? Would you advise them to do something they are passionate about or just start something, just do whatever? <laughs> I've heard that said so often. The problem is sometimes what you're passionate about does not pay the bills. Mm. You still you still have to feed the family, pay your car payment, your, your, your pay your house rent. And yeah, absolutely. I'm passionate about what I do, no doubt about it. But you also have to be flexible. For example, mm -hmm. uh, my company uh, recently uh, just uh, offered some information for people that are passionate about being artists and actors and musicians waiting to get a phone call or an email saying, hey, I've got another TV show I want you to work in. I've got another movie that you can be an extra and we'll pay you. Uh, so the, the, the passion was there, but the work was few and far between. So um, a lot of the actors that I work with in my business were able to figure out how to work, not even from home, as long as they had a phone and, and internet, they could, they could have some money coming in while they were waiting for the new jobs in the field that they were passionate uh, about. 
and it's totally up to us. I, you know, I tell people you you've got to you you've got to invest in yourself. Wow. Meaning that I I've invested thousands of dollars in myself, and I saw the interview you you did with uh, with Howard Berg, the man who is the fastest reader in the entire world, and mm. and now he and now he sells his services of that uh, people can learn, pay him something, and learn how to learn better mm. just for and there's so much information out there that you've got to be careful that you know that's the other thing that kind of cropped up last year with all kinds of so-called experts offering all kinds of magic magic tricks and get rich fast schemes and all these different things that sounded good but they were unrealistic does that make sense I mean, most of the times when we hear people talk and they advise people about businesses the only thing they talk about is do what you're passionate about you know some people could say ah, okay i'm i'm passionate about smoking weed but then it is illegal in some countries so how do you make money else <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. you, you know that's a, well you you know the problem with that is where it's st- still illegal in some places you could be passionate sitting in jail <laughs> exactly <laughs> so that's the thing the question is they tell you you do whatever you're passionate about and you read all these books and what they tell you is do whatever you're passionate about and most time i just look at people and i ask some people what are you passionate about some people have different things they are passionate about of course we know but the world is still growing perhaps whatever you are passionate about right now is not needed in the market we are right now so maybe in the future maybe in the future we might need your services but right now we have to jump on the bandwagon of whatever works and benefit people at the moment well let me give you an example years ago okay. my, my my father and mother were blue collar workers uh, okay. in rochester new york my father was working three jobs okay and my mother was working a full-time job so they were passionate about feeding their three boys who were growing big boys who like to eat a lot <laughs> so, so my father worked at, my father was a was a machinist a machine shop the daytime and the evening he worked at gas station changed the freeze ice cream stand as the manager so here's the father who was working our you know 78 you know they had they were passionate about doing something different but they didn't have the means so why should somebody work 70 hours a week just to get by when I can show them how to work, you know, four to ten hours a week in their spare time, mm. and replace that income with with what I do. Okay. Wow. And again, and again, um, it, nothing's free. So if somebody tells you, "Oh, just send me X amount of dollars, and whammo, you'll have money coming in your checking account," that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. There is risk involved. There is work involved, and it's not easy to do what I do. And that's why I'm only looking for two or three people that want to work with me, and I'll train them how to how to do what I do. But the rest of of you small business owners in the United States and Canada, I can show you at least how to have a service that you will actually use and save money and make money, make more money in your business just by using my service. So I, I don't like to to pretend and to be honest and ethical. I have to mm-hmm. share with the audience today that I'm here to sell them something because mm-hmm. I, I have to tell them it's available. It's a lot of people don't know that what I do is, in, is available to, oh, you mean you can do this? Mm-hmm. Really? Once they find out what I do, uh, they're, you know, they're gonna say, thank you very much. Thank you for telling me you're gonna sell me something. That is very interesting. You know, I love that. One thing about some people is that whenever they find the opportunity to meet people who are able to lift them up, sometimes I think they don't take proper advantage of that person. Like, let's say, for instance, you find somebody who is going to help you. Of course, nothing is free. Just like you said earlier, like, and you know, you have the opportunity for somebody to meet somebody who is going to help you. And, you know, they ask you for like a few tokens. And the next thing you say, okay, I don't have money. How do you help yourself? when you know you don't even have anything to give to somebody who is willing to help you out oh i've been in that i've been in that position before uh, mm. absolutely i've been where it's been very close to to not having the initial money just to get started mm. and i can show people ways to do that sometimes if they find out how powerful it is just for example of what i can offer their business mm. 
they have a way of somehow finding the money to make it happen. And that's that. I'm talking about myself. Okay. I've done that.